What up, black man? Welcome to the Writing Miles channel, where we discuss faith, personal development, mental health, and entertainment for the purpose of helping black men to be more confident in who God has created them to be for his glory and for the good of other people. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm your host, Jam Calpin. Good to see you guys again. I know I can't technically see you, but I'm assume, just assume that I'm looking at you. <laughs> just assume that we're sitting and talking. But anyways, um, I just had this thought the other day. Um, you know, during... Uh, I can't say that word. So, <laughs> during this whole... Uh, these past couple of years, it's been a lot going on. Um, it's been a lot going on. And I know it's been super stressful for a lot of us. You know, for a lot of us, and especially in our community. Uh, and the black community, it's it's been a lot. It's <laughs> it's, a, it's been a serious roller coaster. Not like it wasn't a roller coaster before everything started happening, but it, it's just been crazy. And so, like, I'm be honest with you guys. There there have definitely been times uh, during this these past few years and during these stressful times where I'm like, yo, I really need a drink. I really need a drink. And there are times I took that drink. I, I sat down and I imbibed in some liquor or wine, either one. Um, and, you know, I know it can be kind of difficult, especially for like Christians and believers and stuff like that, um, for spiritual people to even talk about drinking. Sometimes it's, you know, people are super liberal and it's like, drink as much as you want. Um, it's okay. And then for other people, it's like, don't touch this stuff at all. But I think it's important that we talk about it, especially during moments where we feel overwhelmed and we feel super stressed. Because, I mean, there are instances in the Bible where people drank, whether it's for celebration or there's, a, I'm paraphrasing it, but there are a couple of different verses in Psalms and in Proverbs, and the specific one I'm, I'm referencing right now is Psalm 105. It's in Psalm 105. Uh, I can't remember their exact. Oh, here we go. 14 and 15. Psalm 105, verses 14 and 15. And it pretty much talks about how God creates all of these things, like uh, the fruit of the field uh, that we eat and grapes of the vine that we drink and that we use to make wine. And in, that, in those verses, it talks about wine that makes a man's heart merry. You know, like for most people when they consume alcohol, it, you know, loosens them up a little bit, kind of helps relieve stress, take your mind off of things. And that can be fine, you know, that can be fine, but I know the hard part, especially in our community is like alcoholism is a very, very, very real thing. You know, oftentimes we may turn to alcohol um, more than we need to because really it's a lot easier fix sometimes than actually dealing with our emotions dealing with what's going on with us what's going on in our mind and how to actually process situations that are happening it's just true but I know we have to be careful with that you know like it's important that we actually take the time even if we do decide to drink you know because i'm telling you there there have definitely been times like there have been that i can think of maybe four or five times i've actually been like drunk <laughs> drunk in my, in my in my life uh two very distinct times that i can remember um one i was hanging out with a friend this was after college so i'm of legal drinking age um I was hanging out with a friend and, you know, later he had shared with me his whole, <laughs> his whole plan was to, to try to get me drunk. And uh, <laughs> at this point, like, it kind of sounds shady, but it wasn't. Like, I know it was intentional. He was like a big brother to me. And, like, he just wanted me to have a good time. And I did have a good time up until I got drunk <laughs> when, I, when I started, you know, like, uh, yeah, I was throwing up and stuff. Like, I was not not in a good place uh, physically and stuff like that, you know? But very interesting point about that though, like during that whole experience, I never felt 
Like I didn't, I didn't feel scared. Cause that was the first time I had really gotten drunk. I didn't feel scared and I also didn't feel condemned. Like I was telling a brother of mine recently um, about that experience. And you know, I, I told him everything, how, how it went and what it felt like. And there was a moment where I was aware that like, oh yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm gone. <laughs> I am gone. There is no coming back right now. Um, and I went outside of where we were, the bar that we were at, and I went to go throw up. And so like, I found I found an alley or whatever, went went to an alley and, you know, just up chucking, just getting it all out or whatever. And the weird way that I would describe the experience is like, while I was back there in this alley throwing up, I personally, this is me, and my, my experience, I, I personally felt like Jesus was right there with me. You know, like Jesus was there comforting me while I was experiencing this uh, negative experience, you know? Like, it, I, I don't know. And I know I understand, I understand that everybody has their different experiences. And I don't think you can take that away from people. As much as you want to like be very strict when it comes to the word or you know be like the pharisees and sadducees and you know uh you know trying to constrict people to what certain things happen or whatever no i I think in this spiritual walk in this relationship with uh father yah like we can have a lot of experiences a lot of different experiences experiences that um i think it's important that we discuss as believers as followers of christ like it's important for us to to discuss them and maybe we'll talk about that you know in a different video a different podcast because if we don't discuss it i feel like we we limit our experience and we also limit our ability to mature as sons of god as as people and as humans and then that's ultimately what god wants us to do he wants us to mature he wants us to get to a place where we can be leaders so that we can love and serve others, glorify him and be of benefit to other people. Am I saying that we need all need to go out, get drunk and hope that Jesus shows up? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. What I am talking about though is that I can understand it. I can understand that when you're stressed or when you're trying to have a good time, you may get a little drink. And I think it's important that we as believers and as men that we need to be mindful we really need to be honest and mindful with ourselves what our limits are and what we're capable of handling like if you know that alcoholism is a serious thing maybe in like your family or you understand that you have like an addictive personality things like that Or even if you've heard from God saying, don't drink. (laughs) If you have your convictions, don't drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen to those convictions. Be obedient to the things that God is directing you from. Because, I mean, if we're honest, there's nothing in, to my knowledge, and I get it, you know. I just like to read the Bible. I like to read the Bible. I like to study. Um, I like to know what God says to me and to his people. But no, I haven't been to seminary. And to be honest, I don't plan on going. <laughs> Unless somebody's paying for it, I don't, I don't plan on going because I'm aware that I can, you know, access lots of resources to learn about the Bible, to learn about biblical history, to learn about a lot of stuff. And that's a plus of the time that we're in. We have the option and the opportunity to have access to so much information so much information for free or for very little cost but i get it you know i'm not knocking anybody that's choosing or decides to go to seminary um for a reason you know especially if they're trying to go into the profession of of ministry or being a pastor or even just in a scholarly pursuit you know um but for me i just like reading the bible and i like learning things and so from my experience and from what you know, my own studies, I haven't seen anything yet that says don't drink specifically. I know when he talks about in the the New Testament, 
talks about, you know, uh, becoming an elder or pursuing the, the role of becoming an elder or a pastor or something like that, it says things like they are not taken, you know, to wine or strong drink. So they may drink a little bit here and there, you know, a little communion cup, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe at a wedding, you know, Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding. People like to celebrate. People like to get down. People like to loosen up. <laughs> it's just true, especially for our people. Our, our people like to celebrate. We like to party. We like to ha have a good time. And um, we got to be careful sometimes. Sometimes we take it a little too far. And um, I think that's, again, why there's scripture that talks about don't, don't drink to excess. Don't get drunk. Because once you get drunk, them spirits get up in you. And yeah, I said them spirits. <laughs> them spirits get up in you and you lose control. God doesn't want us to be there. He wants us to have self-control for a good reason. But again, sometimes, you know, life be hard and you may want to turn to, to get a drink. Ultimately, what I, what I would say and I would encourage is like, don't let that be the only way that you deal with stuff at all. Don't let that be the only way that you deal with stuff. Like make sure that you're actually talking to somebody Hey, and maybe you and a brother catch up and y'all get something to drink and y'all talk. You know, so it's easier for you to feel like more comfortable to talk. I mean, ultimately, I would encourage everybody, all of us as men, to get better at communicating and sharing our hearts and our feelings so that we don't need to drink or be under the influence of anything to effectively communicate. But make sure you grab a brother or even your pastor, you know, or a spiritual leader in your life to talk about stuff. Go to counseling, you know, find other ways to release stress. Um, you can create stuff, make things, or you can, you know, exercise. That's another way to try to relieve stress. But don't solely depend on what's in that bottle to help you get through stuff. Because that's, that's a setup really is it's a setup depending on something like that can become a vice and it can be very destructive to you and it has been I'm, I'm sure that you are aware that it has been a serious vice within our community you know it, it's true but we can't turn a blind eye to the reality that Sometimes you might want to drink. And sometimes you might be right. It might be okay for you to, you know, get a rum and coke or whatever. Or wine. Whatever. You know, some people, they want to stay away from hard liquor. And so they only drink, like, all natural wines and stuff like that. I've tried that. Me and my wife have had, you know, tried some different all natural. Uh, I can't remember. It's like something free kind of wine. That's supposed to be good for you. You know, we've tried that and it was okay. But ultimately, you got to be careful to not depend on those things and completely be stuck with those things. Like, it can be okay to have a drink from time to time, but be very careful. Pay attention to what the spirit is telling you. Pay attention to what your body is telling you. You know, like, getting drunk does not feel good. That hangover the next day, your stomach being messed up, it's not good at all. <laughs> it's not good. So, now, you know, be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. And so I just wanted to share that, just talk about that, toss out that idea. Because, yeah, during these times, it'd be mad stressful. And I, I'd be thinking about it, you know, like trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with certain aspects of life. And, you know, I a drink here and there, it sounds like a good idea. But I, I'm trying to make sure that I, I'm not dependent on that, you know? And I would encourage the same thing for you. Don't be dependent on what's in that bottle. Do the, the work, the deeper work to process your feelings, to help you deal with the stresses of life so that you can be healthy overall. And so that you can be a better man you know, and be confident in who God has created and called you to be. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts about drinking.
I know some people are like completely, nah, don't drink nothing. <laughs> and some people are like, hey, you know, from time to time, hey, uh, you know, I was watching the news and I needed a drink. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right. Until next time, you guys be safe. Black man, realize God has created you for a purpose. He's created you for a purpose. So be confident in yourself and go live for his glory and for the good of other people. Till next time. Peace.